Hi, and also those who are joining us online on the uh, Open University STEM Facebook live stream or on our, um, our live stream on the internet. I'm Josie Fraser, I'm Deputy Vice-Chancellor here at the Open University and it's my great pleasure to thank you for joining us here tonight for what I hope you'll find is a very, very special lunar event. You may know that 2019 has been an incredibly special year here at the Open University. It's our 50th birthday, but tonight gives us a particularly great opportunity to celebrate our 50th birthday and also the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings. Um, we are the largest university in the UK, for those of you who aren't familiar with the OU. We have branches in Scotland, Wales, Ireland and England, with over 160,000 students based all over the UK and far beyond. Here in Milton Keynes, we've got the Open University's research base, and we have over 200 research students in just the STEM faculty alone. That's our science, technology, engineering, and maths faculty. And one of our main research strengths here is in planetary and space sciences. So colleagues and people around in the general public often think of the OU as making amazing programs with the BBC when you see our logo at the end of Blue Planet and things like that, or the planets that we've done recently. People also think of us as the distance learning university where you can study from home or from anywhere while you're working, studying part time, getting a degree um, at a bit less cost than the campus university. But people don't necessarily know how fantastic our research strength here is, especially in these areas. So it might surprise you to know that we've built scientific instruments that have landed on a comet, that have been to Mars and that have been to Saturn's moon Titan. And we are currently building the next generation of instruments that will go to the moon. So tonight is a great opportunity for us to share and celebrate with you some of the world leading research that goes on here about the moon and how our work informs new missions that will be heading to the moon in the future. The knowledge, skills and expertise that are developed here at the OU in our research teams pave the way to extend human presence out in deep space. And I hope you'll believe, after you've seen some of our displays tonight, that living on the moon is a distinct possibility in the not too distant future. I'm really pleased that tonight gives me a chance to announce one of our latest free learning resources on the moon in the form of an ebook, which is called Moon Minerals, a Visual Guide. And that's been written by Andy Tyndall and Mahesh Anand that are here tonight. And you can download that from our OpenLearn website. So there's a, a picture of the book. And you can also, I am told from tomorrow, get it on the Apple Bookstore if you would like to, as well as on the OpenLearn site that you can see there on the left of the slide. We hope you have a great night tonight. And I hope you share our pride in knowing that the next generation of lunar exploration is starting right here on our doorstep. I'm delighted to hand over and introduce Professor Mahesh Anand, our lead organiser for Moon Night, who's going to talk to you about tonight's event. Mahesh. Thank you very much, Josie, and welcome, everybody. Before I say something, I would just like to present to Josie a specially commissioned T-shirt for this event which, as you can see, you will see all our volunteers wearing this outside, so that's one way of knowing that actually who is responsible for this. But this is especially for you, Josie. Thank you very much. It's a lot more tasteful than the Christmas jumper that I wore yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love the picture on the back. Is that one of our images from the moon rocks? That's right. And actually, you can see that moon rock downstairs when you go out of the door. And uh, there's a special image in there that I will leave it to your imagination. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. So once again, welcome everybody and especially to our uh, young explorers. Before I start, could I just ask a quick question? How many of you were here last year? Okay, very few. That's amazing. 
That's amazing. And thank you for those who are actually returning. I'm sure there are lots of new surprises this year that actually you would find that uh, you didn't experience last year. And I'm sure you have seen some of those while coming through the doors. Now, this is a special year, as Josie already mentioned, but it is also special for another reason. This is the third year in a row that actually we have organized the Moon Night on campus. But this year we have actually involved five local schools who have worked with us leading up to this event and who will be working with us after this event to give us their impression of how they found Moon Knight and what they learned from it. So a special welcome to those of you, but also a special welcome to two of the prize winners from the Bridgewater Primary School in Northampton who are here tonight and I'm told that they are going to be asking some tough questions to space experts who are around here. So we look forward to interacting with you. Now let me just give you a very brief background and context as to what the Moon Knight stands for. The Moon Knight primarily stands for engaging the wider community to actually share the knowledge that we are gaining through our research here at the Open University by researching about the Moon. I'm particularly very passionate about sharing that knowledge to the younger generation because in the field of space science it can take between 20 to 30 years to realize your dream. Okay, now many of the younger audience here are in their maybe teens or even before teens and you can add 20 to 30 to that and then you see they are the one actually who will be in a position tomorrow so to speak to walk on the moon and maybe go towards Mars. Okay, and that is why I'm so excited. Now, I'm also excited because you may have heard about the latest NASA initiative, which is to return the humans to the moon after a gap of more than 50 years. And this time, that program is called Artemis. Okay, and the idea of the Artemis program is that in less than five years' time, you would witness probably the first woman walking on the moon alongside the next man. How exciting, all right? And you can also take comfort that it is not just one space agency and it is not a race between the space agencies that it was 50 years ago. This is a global cooperation, okay? So there is another initiative that has been launched recently um, that NASA and our own European Space Agency is uh, participating and it is called Lunar platform gateway. And what it is, it is, it is something like an international space station that goes around the Earth. In this case, there would be a laboratory that will go around the moon. And it will be the staging post for humans to either do science from there on the moon through tele-robotic means, which means that the astronauts will be actually operating robots on the surface of the moon. But it could also be a post where when humans venture towards Mars, when they come back, they could use this laboratory before they actually return anything to the Earth for something that we call planetary protection because you don't know what you may be collecting from Mars. So this could be a triage point. So I'm really excited about that too, and this is going to happen in the next five to ten years time frame too. Now, aside from all the, um, what we call a basic understanding of science, there are other reasons why humans want to explore the solar system. And one of those reasons is actually to explore the solar system in a sustainable manner using the resources that are available where you are going. So imagine if you go to the moon and you don't have to carry as much water as the Apollo astronauts had to do, you actually cut the cost down of that mission. Likewise, if you know there is water on the moon, you could use that water to actually support your future exploration of Mars. Now, this is a growing area of research called space resources, and the moon is going to play a big role in that to begin with. And in the last 10 years, scientists have actually found tantalizing evidence for a huge amount of water ice on the moon, particularly near the South Pole. And that is why the next NASA mission, that Artemis program I mentioned to you, they would like the astronauts to actually visit a southern polar location. 
Okay? So when you put all of those things together, you can see that next 20 to 30 years are going to be truly exciting in space science. And this is only reaching up to the moon, which you can see in the night sky. And for the last few days, I'm sure that almost everybody in this room would have witnessed how spectacular the moon was looking in the night sky. Okay? So this is our nearest neighbor. Tonight is your opportunity to find out more what we are doing here at the OU, you will get to hold the biggest lunar rock in this country uh, in the form of a lunar meteorite. Okay? You will also get to see the next rover that is going to be actually roving on the surface of the moon. You will also see some of the instruments we are building to send to the moon in the next five years. And you will take part in some quizzes and you will win some prizes. So I really encourage you to fully take part in that. Now, before I actually close this um, initial session, I just wanted to bring to your attention once more this freely available book that Josie introduced called The Moon Minerals. And I would like to particularly thank my co-author, um, Dr. Andy Tyndall, who is sitting there in the audience. Andy, if you could make yourself known. Yes. And it is actually all of Andy's work. He has been at the Open University for more than 40 years. And it was my last 10 years of interaction with Andy that we have actually brought out this project for you. And if you didn't know, tomorrow is the 47th anniversary of the very final Apollo mission, Apollo 17 that took off from Earth. And tomorrow, this book will be available on the Apple iBook store. And of all the minerals that have ever been found on the moon, it's there in this book. And it's free, and it's for the entire world to actually enjoy. And we look forward to getting lots and lots of feedback from people. So what's going to happen next? So you have about an hour and a half to go outside and take part in various hands-on activities. There is also a, a roving astronaut who may like to interview you. Uh, so feel free if you want to be on camera. Everything, almost everything here is being recorded. That again will be archived on our OpenSTEM uh, Facebook page. So if you don't want to be in there, please make that known. But I hope that you do want to be there. Um, and these are some of the images from another event we did in London earlier in the summer at the Royal Society, where uh, we had uh, lots and lots of interested uh, audiences there. And I would just like to leave the younger audience with three things. So I asked my eight-year-old who is sitting there, what is important for a human being? And some of the words that he said really, really surprised me. And some of those included that we should be creative, we should always imagine things. And I think imagination plays a big role in being successful, whatever you do. I'm not here advocating that everybody should do science and maths. But I'm here advocating that everybody must learn. And you learn all the time, whether you are young, whether you are old, it does not matter. And that's what Open University stands for. It stands for lifelong learning. But at the end, don't stop being curious, because if you stop asking questions, then I think the world will stop. So we should always remain curious, and we always ask uh, questions. Um, some of you um, who are uh, social media savvy, you might have already spotted the Twitter handle and the hashtags, etc. So feel free to use those um, in your uh, uh, tweets later tonight. And I will just close um, this initial briefing by thanking two of my stars in my team. Uh, Dr. Alice Stefan, um, who is a, a postdoctoral research fellow here at the OU with me, and Tara Hayden, who started her PhD uh, with me last year. And these two have put in a great deal of effort in what you are going to enjoy. I'm simply here as a mouthpiece um, to talk to you and tell you what is out there. So, I would like you to now um, go outside, enjoy the activities. There will be some lectures taking place here. You would have been told you should already be given a leaflet that has the, um, all different activities that are ongoing. So please choose whatever you like to interact with. 
If you have any questions, please come to the information point. And finally, if there is any fire alarm that goes off, you know what to do. You need to find the nearest exit and get out of this building as soon as possible. So with that, let me close this and invite you to be outside and take part in all the activities. Thank you.